Students can come into the program with skills they learned in either high school or maybe community college. From there, they can work towards their bachelor's degree and even get a certificate, or they can work even further and even get a PhD. Take a look at these positive messages all across, literally from wall to wall on the pavement in front of Minico High School. So here's the thing about coffee with a mule. If you want to get the coffee, you have to keep up with the mule. <laughs> Pre-pandemic, seeing live theater was easy. You just grabbed your ticket and found your seat. But now with the pandemic, this local theater is adapting to bring the theater to your laptop screen. According to data from the Trevor Project, at least one LGBTQ young person attempts suicide every 45 seconds. That beep you just heard means it's been 45 seconds since you started watching this video, which means at least one young person has attempted. And by the time this story is over, there will be at least one more. Our region here in the Magic Valley, Region 4, is right here in green on the map. To make it easier to social distance, each player is allowed two spectators that can come and cheer them on from the stands. That used to be the rule, but under the new Stay Healthy resolution, COVID-19 guidelines for schools are much stricter. For them, the love of coffee runs deep, and so does the love of skateboarding. It's in the name. A green level means it's business as usual for the schools with in-person classes. A yellow level means there will be a stricter focus on COVID-19 precautions like social distancing. The school district describes the orange level as a hybrid. Half of the students will continue learning here in school. The other half would be learning here online at home. That would be determined by an A day, B day type schedule. Level red means students would be back to complete distance learning. This abandoned Idaho college is rumored to be one of Idaho's haunted hotspots. But if you want to brave this attraction, you'll have to head out in the middle of nowhere. The Melba City Council recently voted to impose an emergency moratorium on new subdivisions. That's similar to action taken by Caldwell City leaders earlier this year. Now the move puts a pause on three proposed subdivision projects that would give a huge boost to the town's population. Being kind of hidden has, you know, kept people from, I guess, discovering Melba. But again, we, we all saw the future that the growth was going to happen. The city says they decided to put the moratorium in place for a few reasons. First, they say they need more time to understand how Idaho's new property tax bill will impact their budget. We need better understanding of that, you know, so we hate to allow all this growth and then realize that we can't, we're not going to be getting the funds to cover this growth. Plus, a subdivision ordinance is still in the works, but officials are most concerned about making sure the city is ready for the growth these proposed projects would bring. We've seen what's happened to some of these other towns. Some things have been good, some things have not, and we want to make sure it's done right because we only have one shot at this. Our media partners at the Idaho Statesman report there are three proposed subdivision projects. The first would be 18 homes and would be located over on Randolph Avenue. The second would be 32 homes and would be located on Blue Ox Lane. A third proposed would bring 11 homes to Northwest Melba. Although this proposal was denied by planning and zoning, the developer is expected to submit an updated application. The proposed projects plus a 26 house subdivision that's already under construction could add more than 70 new homes to the Melba city. The city says they have room. So we have room for 184 more homes um, to be built in the city limits for water abilities, uh, you know, to be able to meet fire compression and all that stuff. But the additions would mean a population boom, the biggest the city has seen in decades. Melba has a population of nearly 600 people, and that means 260 residential homes. But if these new subdivisions go up, the town's population could nearly double. Our city limits are not that, that big, and there's almost, only so much space we can actually expand and annex in, because if you drive through our city limits, just we're surrounded by a lot of you know, county homes, and we, we don't have any control over the county homes. Now, because Melba is in a unique situation because of its city limits, city officials say that small town feel will still be maintained even with the possible growth. And another thing to keep in mind, this moratorium is in place for up to six months. However, city officials are expecting it to take much less time than that. In Melba, I'm Natasha Williams, Fox 9 Now.
In our Rebound Idaho series, we're working to connect you with the resources, tools, and information you need to successfully navigate the coronavirus pandemic. That includes answering your questions about unemployment benefits. Our newsroom has gotten several calls, emails, even Facebook messages from people saying they've seen an increase in their unemployment benefits being denied. So I reached out to the Department of Labor and did some research to get some answers. The height of the unemployment due to the pandemic, our unemployment rate was 11 6%. Now those numbers are much lower. Our January unemployment rate is 3.4%. But the Idaho Department of Labor says there are still Idahoans that need help. The Continued Assistance Act extended COVID-19 help already provided through last year's CARE Act, meaning they were still able to offer that help with some changes. The biggest one is a requirement for uh, additional um, documentation uh, to be eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance. It's those changes the Department of Labor says might be impacting your claim. So at the Department of Labor, we're doing our best to administer the benefits. And um, I think it's important to remember that not everyone is eligible. Another thing to keep in mind, Idaho is one of several states that's seen an increase in scammers filing fraudulent unemployment claims. So in an effort to combat that, we are partnering with IDME to verify individuals' uh, identities. Funding from the Continued Assistance Act has already been used up. Now, benefits will be funded by the recently signed American Rescue Plan, but the eligibility requirements will stay pretty much the same. As of yet, what we've seen with the um, America Rescue Plan Act, we have not seen significant changes from um, uh, the changes that were made to the CARES Act through the Continuing Assistance Act. Coming up tomorrow morning on Good Morning Idaho, I'll break down in-depth eligibility requirements for unemployment. And if you're filing for unemployment, something else to keep in mind. If your employer attached, meaning you're planning on going back to the same employer, you are not required to seek work for a certain amount of time. But if you're not, the process is a little different for you. If you're not employer attached, then you do need, then you are work seeking. And you need to, to look for work and submit two different um, work seeking attempts each, each week. We'll have plenty of resources on the unemployment application process for you on our website. Just head to IdahoNews6.com and click the rebound tab. In Boise, I'm Natasha Williams, Idaho News 6. I'm Natasha Williams here at Boise State University and more than half a century after landing on the moon, technology continues to evolve in order to boost space exploration as NASA prepares to return to the moon through the Artemis missions. And with all that space exploration does come some issues, right? Things like spacesuit mobility, navigation and communication. And that's why each year NASA releases a set of problems they need solving to universities across the country. And students here at Boise State say challenge accepted. I always had this thought growing up like, oh, NASA knows it all. They're ahead of everything. And then you sit down and work with them and they're figuring it out just like everyone else. And figuring it out is just what students on Boise State's microgravity team are doing by coming up with creative solutions. One solution is similar to a tool belt. Our team designed a, a quick release attachment system for astronauts to use on the moon during spacewalks. Ainsley Iverson is about to start her second year at Boise State. She and a team of 20 other students worked for months to design the system. It, it sounds simple, but it actually has a, a lot of different components. While Ainsley and her team focused on the tool belt, recent grad Caleb Cram and his team focused on a multi-purpose headset. And essentially it projects light onto that lens to create holograms. Those holograms form things like digital maps and notepads the astronauts can interact with while out in space, all while still being able to see their surroundings. It's got a series of sensors on it that allow, it tracks like your hands and your eyes to allow you to manipulate these holograms and control them using hand tracking and eye tracking. It's almost like Tony Stark's Iron Man suit. We're online and ready. One of the mentors for Boise State's microgravity team is former astronaut Steve Swanson. And so I have the experience of working at NASA and being an astronaut. I can guide them in what the astronaut is going to need out of this product they're building. So I can give them that user experience and they get that. I think it helps them quite a bit, but also then how to be a good team member and how to just develop something like this and how to prototype something. Teaching may be different from exploring space, but Steve says inspiring the next generation is a truly out of this world experience. You can see that they're, they're thinking about like, what do I want to do in my life? This could be part of it or this could be what I want to do. And I love to see that and see them, you know, realize that they can be part of this team if they want.
The students say they're not for sure yet whether or not their devices will be used on the Artemis missions, which are tentatively scheduled for some time in the next five years. From Boise State, I'm Natasha Williams, Idaho News 6. This is Idaho News 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Natasha Williams. A grand opening celebration quickly turned into a scary situation at Soldier Mountain Resort today. The resort's new owners had planned to celebrate the opening of their new bike park. Instead, the Phillips fire forced everyone to evacuate. Well, Sun Valley Resort, meanwhile, officially opened their new expert terrain after receiving a few feet of snow last week. Check this out. Gorgeous video, right? As we await word from the FDA on the emergency use authorization of the fire vaccine, the need is growing increasingly urgent. If you drive in any direction in Ada County, you will most certainly hit a construction zone. It's everywhere, right? COVID-19 has a lot of us itching to get outside and many of us are flocking to the mountains. And like everything else this year, holiday gatherings, parties, and even fundraisers will look a little different. As a matter of fact, Interfaith Sanctuary's annual holiday fundraiser will be an extremely different holiday <laughs> extravaganza. Idaho Business for Education has collected hundreds of computers for local students to use this upcoming school year. It's all part of the Close the Digital Divide event. Into Thursday morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, the whole state covered all of this white, all of this purple, all of that is snow. Portland getting soaked as well. The entire Pacific Northwest is really getting soaked from that system moving in. Take a look at this live view from the Grove Hotel. Current conditions right now actually decently clear compared to uh, the smoke that we've been experiencing all day long. It's been so thick you could almost taste it, right? 68 degrees right now in Boise, 49% humidity, and there's a possibility that you could see some scattered showers throughout tonight and even into tomorrow morning, and we'll get to that in just a minute.